Hello and welcome back to Lucknow Nama Academy. I am Jamie and today we will be talking about development of psychology as a discipline. Before we move ahead, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, click the bell icon to stay updated. Also, don't forget to go through the syllabus introduction video before starting. Okay, let's begin. When we talk about the development of psychology as a discipline, we talk about the schools of psychology. So, let's start from the beginning. Formal ideas about behavior in mind in western culture began with the classical Greek philosophers. Psychology as a separate area of study split away from philosophy over 100 years ago. In the first decades of 20th century, psychologists came to hold different views about the nature of the mind and the best ways to study it. About the same time, fundamental questions were raised about what should be studied in psychology. Different influential psychologists of the time held quite different views on the nature of mind and the proper subject matter of psychology. Schools of thought formed around these leaders as their students adopted their ideas. These schools of thought are known as the schools of psychology. They are set direction for much of the research on mind and behavior in the early years of 20th century. Five schools of psychology became very important in the development of psychology as a discipline. These include functionalism, structuralism, behaviorism, gestalt psychology, and psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is not strictly a school of psychology, but we will still learn about it because of its importance. Now let's discuss each school in detail. The first school of psychology that we are going to discuss is structuralism. In psychology, structuralism is a systematic movement founded in Germany by Wilhelm Wundt and mostly attributed to Edward P. Titchener. Structuralism aimed to deconstruct the adult mind, defined as the whole of experience from birth to the present, into its most basic, quantifiable components before determining how these components fit together to produce more complex forms. Introspection was the main instrument of structuralist psychology, a careful set of observation made under control condition by trained observers using a stringently defined descriptive vocabulary. The structuralist school suffered a great deal of influence loss when Titchener passed away. despite the fact that the structuralism marked the separation of psychology from philosophy the next school of psychology that we are going to discuss is functionalism in psychology functionalism is a wide school of thought that emerged in the united states in the late 19th century in an effort to challenge the german school of structuralism headed by edward b tichner functionalists emphasized the value of empirical logical reasoning above an experimental trial and error philosophy these individuals included psychologists like james and angel as well as philosophers like mead moore and Dewey. the group was more interested in the capability of the mind than the process of thought thus the movement's main areas of attention were research's practical applications functionalism has never developed into a formal prescriptive school but it has played a historical role in the philosophical development of thought connecting the structuralists interest in the anatomy of the mind to the focus on the functions of the mind and later to the rise in expansion of behaviorism Before we move ahead we need to understand that the school of structuralism was established in Germany by Wilhelm Wundt but was brought to the United States by his student Edward B Titchener Edward B Titchener became very popular in regards of the school of structuralism later when Edward B Titchener died the school of structuralism lost its influence the school of psychology that we are going to discuss is very important behaviorism between the two world wars psychological thought was dominated by the very prominent academic psychology school known as behaviorism classical behaviorism which predominated in the first third of the 20th century focused solely on quantifiable and visible statistics and ignored ideas emotions and other aspects of general interior mental activity according to behaviorism an organism is said to react to conditions stimuli that are set by both internal biological processes and external environmental factors american psychologist john b watson developed the first iterations of behaviorism as a response to the introspective psychologies according to watson's description of behaviorism in his book behaviorism in 1924 behaviorism maintains that consciousness is not a defined nor an unseeable term that it is only another euphemism for the soul of more ancient times The next school we are going to discuss is Gestalt psychology. Gestalt psychology, a branch of psychology that was established in the 20th century, laid the groundwork for the contemporary study of perception. Gestalt theory emphasizes that the whole of anything greater than its part, that is the attributes of the whole are not deducible from analysis of the parts in isolation. In contemporary German, the word Gestalt refers to how something has been positioned or put together. There isn't a direct translation into English. The common meanings are form and shape, although the term is also translated 
stated as pattern or configuration in psychology. The associationists and structural school atomistic perspective gave rise to Gestalt theory in Austria and Germany, an approach which fragmented experiences into distinct and unrelated elements. Gestalt studies made used instead of phenomenology. Moving ahead, we will now discuss psychoanalysis. The word psychoanalysis was first used by Austrian psychiatrist Sigmund Freud, who also developed the clinical findings and theories that gave rise to the psychoanalytic movement. Strictly speaking, psychoanalysis is not a school of psychology, but it has had a great impact on the thinking and theorizing of many psychologists. Psychoanalytic theory, which stresses unconscious mental processes and is also referred to as deep psychology, has influenced the treatment procedure for mental problems known as psychoanalysis. Freud observed that the majority of patients he saw in his early career suppressed events related to distressing sexual encounters. Thus, he put forth the hypothesis that anxiety was a result of the repressed energy, libido, associated with sexuality. The repressed energy manifested itself in a variety of symptoms that acted as psychological defense mechanisms. Later, Freud and his followers expanded the definition of anxiety to encompass emotions of dread, guilt and humiliation brought on by aggressive and hostile dreams as well as fear of loneliness brought on by being separated from a person that patient is reliant upon. Sigmund Freud published a very very important work known as The Interpretation of Dreams in the 1900. When we talk about the development of psychology as a discipline, discussion of the third force in psychology becomes important. Psychoanalysis and behaviorism dominated psychology throughout the first half of the 20th century, but a new school of thought known as humanistic psychology evolved during the second half of the century. Often referred to as the third force in psychology, this theoretical perspective emphasized conscious experiences. Carl Rogers, an American psychologist, is frequently cited as one of the founders of this school of thinking. Rogers firmly believed in the power of free will and self-determination. With his well-known hierarchy of needs theory of human motivation, psychologist Abraham Maslow has made a contribution to the humanistic psychology. According to this hypothesis, individuals were driven by needs that became more complicated over time. Once the most basic needs are fulfilled, people then become motivated to pursue higher level needs. As you can see from this brief history of psychology, since its formal beginnings in Wundt's lab, this field has undergone significant development and change. The narrative does not, without a doubt, stop here. Since 1960, new concepts and viewpoints have been added as psychology has continued to develop. The numerous facts of human experiences are now being studied in psychology, from the biological impacts on behavior to the effects of social and cultural variables. Most psychologists nowadays don't associate themselves with a particular school of thinking. Instead, they frequently concentrate on a certain speciality area or viewpoint, frequently incorporating concepts from several theoretical backgrounds. The novel concepts and theories brought about by this eclectic approach will continue to influence psychology for years to come. Having said that, let's have a quick look at the modern perspectives. Modern perspectives include the behavioral perspective, biological perspective, the cognitive perspective, the social perspective, the developmental perspective, the humanistic perspective, and the psychoanalytic perspective. So that was the brief introduction to the development of psychology as a discipline. As you read more about the different schools and their influence on psychology, the picture will get clearer. I hope that was helpful. If you have any further queries, you can leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. So here's the end of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, thank you and all the best.